Hey, this is Bob Sears, and people always ask me, how did you end up working with so many gurus? And it started with a Lamborghini. Um, I was like seven, eight, or nine years old, and my dad was driving down the street, and I saw the coolest car with the coolest doors ever, right? Opening up, and I thought, this is so freaking awesome. So I, uh, I looked at my dad, and I said, you know, that's the car I'm gonna get. And my dad looked at me, and he's like, son, that car costs more than a house. And kind of sighed. You know, I'm young. I go, okay, so like, what's the deal? I mean, I go, he owns one. Why can't I? And he didn't really have an answer. He kind of looked at me like, that sort of made sense, but it didn't make sense to him because he didn't really believe that, you know, you could go out and make any money, right? Um, he had a lot of great ideas, but never went to fruition and never really tried them out. He was scared to try and attempt things. So he worked for a bank for almost 40 years. Um, so I started growing up, and when I was 16, you know, I, I had that idea of buying expensive things, being a millionaire, and, and uh, I remember going to my mom when I was 16 saying, you know, listen, I'm going to be a millionaire. Um, and she said, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> And, uh, and then when I was 21, and the check didn't come, and I couldn't figure out why. So I started doing massive research. Like, I just started reading everything and anything I could about being wealthy and looking at business opportunities. And, you know, and then finally someone turned me on to a book called Thinking Grow Rich, right, by Napoleon Hill. And I started studying, and lo and behold, things started coming together. I started figuring out pieces of the puzzle, uh, how to win friends and influence people, and I kept studying those books. and certain strategies and certain things I did started working out <clears throat> to the point where I finally ended up um, meeting my then girlfriend we ended up moving to and now my wife but we ended up moving to Arizona from Massachusetts it was a huge move and I had been doing some traveling with a marketing company and all of a sudden here I am I'm you know meet someone that's really the first guru I ever met and I, I looked at my wife and I said I'm gonna work for him she goes great how much are you gonna make I said well he actually doesn't know I'm gonna work for him yet and what does that mean well uh, that means I actually showed up at his office every day for six weeks straight just to help out just to talk just to do whatever I could and most people wouldn't do that like they wouldn't take that action to, to just you know meet with him you know just just hang out with him well, something interesting happened after six weeks. And the reason I wanted to meet with him and, and work for him is he was actually one of the top real estate speakers in the country at one point. And it ended up being that his right-hand person left and he hired me literally on the spot. And it wasn't the money that I, you know, that wasn't where my windfall happened, but I went from speaking in front of 30 to 40 people for about four or five weeks to on the sixth week, I spoke in front of 800 people and that's where I learned how to start my public speaking career was literally introducing this guy you know the first time I did was probably 30 seconds right it was like here he is <laughs> and then it got to um, the next time was you know 40 50 people and that was for a while and then all of a sudden we had an audience of 800 people and he goes okay you're gonna go up and do your thing and I went oh man it was the first time someone ever handed me a microphone and he goes, look, it's the same thing you've been doing. It's just a lot more people. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know, you get what you wish for. And that's the problem. Like, you, you do get what you wish for. You do get what you work for. And you're going to have to go through those, we call them a terror barrier, right? There's, there's little things we're going to have to do that are going to scare the pants off of us. And we have to do them if we're going to reach the level of success we want. And that's the challenge. Like, that really is the challenge. And that's how it started out. And... I went on to you know different levels of success and it was funny I, I always noticed every time I failed in, in the book Think You Grow Rich there's in every adversity there's a seed of equivalent or greater value and what happened was ironically enough that that turns out to be true because every time I had a failure I bounced back stronger better made more money um, and when the, the meltdown happened and uh, the real estate industry. I was actually in the mortgage business, had a radio show in Phoenix with a buddy of mine. Um, and I was crushing it, right? I was making really good money. 
um, and all of a sudden had investment homes, was just cruising, doing two to three loans per client because where they were refinancing their their uh, their home and then reinvesting like you know fifty, a hundred thousand dollars and buying two investment homes. So I was doing three three loans per client, right? And we were teaching people how to really invest in real estate conservatively throughout the big years because they were like, it was appreciating like 50%. We said, that's not accurate. That's not true. You shouldn't listen to that. And really trying to be conservative. The irony is the meltdown happened. We didn't know everything was going to go down, you know, 50%. And everything hap happened so fast. For six months, I still had clients. Um, but when I got done and realized there was nothing happening, I asked my buddies and they said, well, we're kind of upset with you because the reality is we haven't done any deals for six months. You just had such a pipeline that it took this long and, you know, there's so few banks were actually lending money at that time. And then I had to reinvent my whole self. I lost everything. And an interesting thing happened. I read an ad called Superstars Only. Don't even apply unless you're an overachiever can prove it. We don't hire backgrounds. We hire top producers, young or old. If you have the stuff, we'll know. And uh, it's the Chet Holmes one. And I actually had, it was it was ironic because I was going to go work for a guy that, uh, believe it or not, if you guys know um, something about Mary, uh, the Farley brothers, he was friends with the Farley brothers, and we we're going to do this oil company business. And he turned me on to Chet Holmes. And then I answered that ad as we were just kind of negotiating. And I actually was thinking of accepting that job and had said, okay, I'm probably going to come on board. And then I read this ad and I go that's me I'll call and I answer the ad and I said this is the Chet Holmes this is the material he actually gave me this material to kind of study some of it I said this guy's a genius I want to work for him and I told him I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move forward I didn't tell my wife because she had no idea that I was doing something like this because she you know would have freaked if she didn't if she knew I quit a job before I had another job and that's sort of the thing, right? Like it was a scary moment. And what I didn't know is I actually didn't really get the job with them. You had to go through this test. It was called the five and five. You had to make five sales in five days. And uh, so I'm, I go to work for, so I'm, I'm testing out for the business breakthroughs and, and Tony Robbins and Chet Holmes. And the first day I don't sell anything. It was a Thursday, I think. And then Friday, I the first guy I sold, I actually didn't take his American Express number down correctly. I had to call him back. So I made one sale. And then Saturday and Sunday had was there, and it was um, Mother's Day weekend. And they didn't tell me it was, you know, so I figured we don't work the weekends. On Monday, you know, um, the supervisor calls me and goes, well, you're going to make all your sales today. I'm like, wait a minute. I was supposed to work the weekend. No one told me. I, Holy smokes, you know. She goes, no, 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 just make as many sales as you can today and we'll see what's up but you got to make five or, or you're out and uh so it's kind of freaky right so i i end up uh making calls and actually that day i was so i made a few calls and i realized my mindset's not there i'm, I'm not going to sell anything and we had partners that were already working for the company at the time and i called her up and i said you know i'm really stressed this this really was stupid i shouldn't have done this and she goes stop it bob you're really good at what you do read the script the way they told you just do what you can and you'll, you'll make it. And I said, okay. Um, we had a training, so I didn't make any calls for like the morning. And I got off the training, I was so pumped up, and I closed the first guy. So that was two. Closed the next guy, that was three. So then I closed four, and um, the supervisor calls me up and she goes, oh my God, you're cranking. She goes, this is awesome, I'm gonna give you some more leads. So I was like, great. So then now it's Wednesday, I end up uh, I end up closing two more so I end up getting technically six and five days and we get on our mandatory meeting that day and she goes hey I want to welcome Bob Sears to the meeting uh, to the company and as you know the previous 53 people had not succeeded in accomplishing this task so let's give a warm round of applause to him and I went oh my goodness if I had known that 53 people hadn't succeeded prior to me do you think I would have succeeded probably not I would have put that seed of doubt in my mind but I didn't know that and from there I just kind of ended up meeting because of that background of working with business breakthroughs and Tony Robbins and Chet Holmes it it totally changed my life I became national sales manager for a company I traveled throughout the United States I've traveled to Russia Singapore London 
Romania, Bucharest, well, Bucharest, Romania, but just, oh, and um, just all parts of the world. And, and it, and then I just ended up being a consultant for companies and really teaching them where there's a gap, there's usually an opportunity. So I would find the gaps, I'd close those gaps and accelerate their growth. And because of that, one decision to work for someone for free for six weeks, it just, everything stacked. You know, Tony talks about stacking. And sometimes we don't think enough about stacking the successes we have one upon the other. And it's led me to where I am today. And what I'm gonna do from now on, and you know, working with David and Business Nitrogen as well, and you know, we put that company together years and years ago. Originally, you know, talking about the Golden Circle and really helping people. Um, now we're having a, a you know a million follower challenge, and, and I my my conviction is to do this every day is put out some good content. But I wanted you to start with my story because it's so important to understand you know what and who the person is that's giving you the information. You know, you always want to take it from the source. So I'm really excited to be doing this. Uh, I know this first one was a little bit long, but that's okay. I mean, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed my story. Um, I hope you comment on and, and like this and, and keep following me uh, forever, actually, and, and just enjoy the ride and, and take those chances. When someone says something's crazy, it usually means you're on the right track. Um, I know my wife's told me I'm crazy at home at times, and, you know, we've been together going on 25 24 years so i mean i think she's she's uh understanding that you know maybe it is a little crazy but or i am a little crazy but it ends up working out so listen i really appreciate it um live like today is the last day of your life and you just have fun with it and we'll see you on the other side